Do you shoot raw? Would you like to show the world that you shoot raw? Well, head on over to store.fronosphoto.com right now to pick up any of my I Shoot Raw t-shirts. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Com. And today we're in Philadelphia at America's First Zoo to do a real world review of the Sigma 100 to 400 millimeter F5 to 6.3. So my goal today with the 100 to 400 millimeter Sigma is to get some interesting shots inside the zoo. Now keep in mind, this is an $800 full frame lens that is a pretty big zoom. You get 100 to 400, but you have to keep in mind that it's an F5 at 100 and as you zoom out, it goes all the way out to 6.3. Now I'm using the Nikon D500 because it is a cropped sensor camera, which gives me a 150 to 600 millimeter, 35 millimeter equivalent, as well as the Nikon D5, just in case anybody out there would like to throw this lens on their full frame body. Now let's see how the photos turn out. One of the main attractions here at the Philadelphia Zoo are the silverback gorillas, and there also so happens to be two babies. One was born eight months ago, and one was born two weeks ago, and they said it really hasn't been out of the enclosure. The trick is how do you get a clean piece of glass? There's no clean piece of glass. We saw the eight month old, but it was really difficult to shoot through the glass, especially with the 100 to 400 millimeter on the Nikon D500 because of that extra 1.5 crop factor. Super reflective. It's that hat reflection. Yeah. But it was also difficult because there were some people standing there that put off really bright reflections into the glass and the glass was dirty. But I was still able to get some nice headshots of Honey the Gorilla through the glass that I think I'm happy with. So one of the harder things to do at a zoo or anywhere that has glass is to shoot through the glass. You have to make sure you're not getting distortion if you're shooting from the sides or that it's not terribly too dirty when you're trying to get images of whatever's behind it. There's plenty of kids that smudge up the glass with their face or their hands, which makes it harder for you to get the photos. So at any time where you can shoot either through a fence or netting or have a clear shot, that is your better opportunity to get cleaner, sharper images. Now we didn't think that the gorillas were gonna leave the enclosure or step outside of the shadow. So we went and we moved on to somewhere else and then realized there is an outside section overlooking where the gorillas could be if they went out of the enclosure into the sun. And that's exactly what ended up happening. Thankfully, we were patient enough because both mother gorillas came out with their babies as well as the father gorilla to walk around, which gave me an opportunity to get some great shots all the way out at 400 millimeters on the D500, which was 600 millimeter equivalent. So it was a good thing that I had the crop sensor camera there because I think on the full frame, the 400 may not have been long enough to get the shots that I got. So how does the lens feel in the hands? Well, honestly, it's pretty good. Now it's a contemporary lens from Sigma. It's not their art line, it's not their sport line. It's considered to be their okay line, which isn't that bad because some of you guys are just looking for an affordable super zoom lens, which is what this one gives you. Now it feels pretty good. It's not too heavy, just over two pounds compared to the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter, which clocks in at over 4.3 pounds. So where you're losing out on that extra reach, you're gaining because it doesn't weigh as much, which should make it easier to shoot with throughout a day. So a lot of people want big zooms, but don't want to spend the big money. Now this is a trade-off. Now $800 honestly isn't that expensive for a good piece of glass. Because if you wanted to get something like a 100 to 400 millimeter on the Canon side, you're looking at $2,000. So 800 is pretty reasonable for a 100 to 400, but that comes with a caveat. It's an F5 to 6.3, which means it's not really meant or really good in low light situations or indoor shooting, but out in bright daylight, you should be fine with almost anything you shoot.
Even though you have OS built into this lens, that doesn't make up for the fact that it's a 6.3 aperture. You still will need to raise your ISO up higher to counteract that f6.3, so just be aware of that. One of the more difficult things with shooting the gorillas was when they went from the sun to the shade or had their back to the sun and their eyes were in the shade. But there were some times where I was able to capture the eye with some sun on it. Because what's interesting is that the gorillas look at you. They see you. They know what you're doing. They show some emotion, which is really awesome for capturing great pictures. I think I have a point and shoot um, disposable yeah. camera. That's probably what the gorillas are saying. Does that guy have a disposable camera? You know what you know you know what I'm the best at, Steven? Patience. I can wait all day for that one shot. You, you ready to go to the next thing? Here's a cool fact about the polar bear. Its name is Coldilocks and it was born on December 13th, 1980, which makes it 36 years old. I'm 36 years old, which means I've actually seen that polar bear when I was a kid. Now they weren't sure if the polar bear was gonna go into the water, but it did, which didn't exactly make for great photos because of the distortion in the glass under the water. But I think I got a couple of cool shots of the polar bear floating by. How's the autofocus in this lens? Well, it seemed pretty good for me. It seemed pretty snappy, both on the Nikon D500 as well as the Nikon D5, which should be expected because they are pro-level cameras. But when I was tracking subjects, it didn't seem like I was missing my focus at all. It seemed to be pretty snappy and fast, even with the OS on, but the only way to see how good the focus was is to get the pictures back to the studio and see how they looked. Now let me put something into perspective for you. I'm getting the 600 millimeter equivalent on the Nikon D500. If I was to use a, say, Nikon 600 millimeter F4, well, you're looking at spending somewhere around eight to $10,000 to get that reach and have something that's much larger. Would I get better quality or sharper images with that 600 F4? Probably. Would it be as versatile throughout the day in the zoo? Absolutely not. So I wouldn't be worried to use a 100 to 400 that's an F5 to 6.3. You know the limitations, but the trade-off is sometimes worth it because it's $800, not $8,000. <gasps> Eagles. Holy Jesus, it got busy. Caca! It was pretty cool to see a bald eagle in the flesh, which is super huge. And what's great is that it just sits around on a perch in the sun, which makes for good shots. Now, I tried to get some tight headshots with the bird looking to the left, to the right, kind of behind it, as well as get some shots of its feathers for some details that may come in handy in the future to help tell a photo story. One thing I noticed when photographing the eagle is that in one shot, I had a white blown out background because from the angle I was shooting, I had the sky in the background. So all I needed to do was take one step to the right or one step to the left, and I was able to have trees and nice green in the background, which gave me nice contrast, and the image popped that much more. So we just came inside where there's a bird sanctuary. So the birds are inside. Uh, and I brought out the Nikon D5 as well as the D500. And being that we don't need as much reach inside to get the birds, I'm gonna break out the D5 right now. And you guys always love to see how the tests look on multiple cameras, so let's do it. I got snacks. Look, it's my bag of snacks. The only thing I'm missing is a juice box. But I bet you somebody does have a juice box. So let's just get out the D5, switch it up. It's, nice. it's a nice feeling lens. The rubberized everything feels pretty good. Put it on there. Now we've got 100 to 400 to go shoot the birds. Oh, IS is on. See, that's focused on the fence. So to shoot these birds, I had to start manually focusing because I'm far away from the fence. We all know from shooting sports, at least I've said in other videos, if you wanna shoot through a fence, you get really close to it. Well, in this case, I have all of these 
leaves in the way. I can't get close to it. So I had to use manual focus to get it close and then the autofocus got it. I just needed to give it a little bit of help and then the fence basically disappeared. Oh, he's upside down. Oh, he's cleaning his butt. Oh, hello. Oh, yes. Oh, that feels nice. Oh, clean, clean, clean. Another thing you want to keep in mind is that you want to make sure that your shutter speed doesn't fall below your focal length. So here, because I'm shooting a lot with the Nikon D500, if I'm shooting out all the way at 400 millimeters, that's giving me a 600 millimeter equivalent, which means I don't want my shutter speed to really drop below 1 640th of a second, 1 500th of a second, because I don't want to get a lot of handshakes. So that's why for a lot of these images, I was using the optical stabilization. So indoors, you're gonna have to bump that ISO up much higher, especially if you're shooting all the way out at the 400 millimeter range. Oh, this is cool. In some situations, there were no fences in our way and we could just get pretty close, zoom in, and get nice shots because they had nice color, they had nice tone, they had nice backgrounds, and that was really cool to be able to get that close and get shots like I did. Oh, look at the little yellow ones. Keep in mind, 100 to 400 is a big range, but if you're gonna be photographing birds, you may wanna consider the 150 to 600 Sigma, which is a little more expensive, but it's gonna give you more reach. It's gonna give you the equivalent of up to a 900 millimeter lens on your crop sensor cameras. Do you have a camera and you're not happy with the results that you're getting? Would you like to take better pictures similar to what I'm able to capture, trying to get the perfect exposure every time? Well, if you said yes, well, check out fronosphoto.com guide to get a free preview of the Fronos Photo Guide to Getting Out of Auto. Oh, I made bird. So the minimum focus distance with this lens is five and a quarter feet, which is a pretty big range. It's uh, a little shorter than me because I'm like five foot eight going on six foot two, which is never actually gonna happen. But it didn't seem that bad when I was trying to shoot some of the birds. It felt like I could get pretty close, even closer than that five and a quarter, but if it says five and a quarter, it's five and a quarter. You could technically eat them or you wouldn't want to. Just remember, as you raise the ISO, you may introduce more noise and grain into your images. So this lens does have optical stabilization built in. It has two modes for that. Now I stayed in mode one for most of the day. And one of the things that I noticed is that it doesn't seem to stabilize as well as some of the much more expensive Nikon 70 to 200, 2.8 to 200 to 500, where those lenses seem to give you more stability when you're looking through the lens and holding your finger halfway down on the shutter button. This just didn't seem to give me that same stability, so I'll have to see the images later to see if at lower shutter speeds, the OS still did a good job or not. Can I feed something? Am I allowed to feed anything in here? Fun fact about the Philadelphia Zoo, it's America's first zoo. When the zoo opened in 1874, they had 1,000 animals on exhibit. <laughs> Philadelphia Zoo was commissioned in 1859, but did not open till 1874 due to the Civil War. Oh, sorry, I was getting a snack. I wonder if they sell individual juice boxes. Though I wouldn't drink a juice box, actually. Too much sugar. So one thing I wish I was able to do more of at the zoo was photograph kids. Now, because these are not my kids or somebody that I know with kids, well, I didn't really want to take their photo because mm, I didn't ask for permission. But I did get a few and they look pretty good, at least on the back of the camera. Now, I think this is a great, well-rounded lens if you want to get candids of kids running around the zoo, running around a park, playing in the backyard, doing whatever they're going to do, because you can be further away and zoom in and still capture those candid images. So that's what the 100 to 400 is gonna give you, the ability to get some really good candids, but it's not gonna give you those wide angle shots, especially when you're closer to your subject. 
So one of the things you have to be aware of is that having a 100 to 400 or a 150 to 600 equivalent means you're gonna get a lot more tighter shots of the subjects that you're shooting. Now in this case at the zoo, when I was shooting the hip hopopotamus, all I could get was a tight shot of it underwater with its eyes sticking out. It's not very interesting, but it does make for a nice tight shot. And remember that most animals don't show emotion, which means it doesn't look as interesting. But just keep in mind, not everything should be the tightest of tightest shots. Look, pony rides. Six dollars. Oh, it's for people under a hundred pounds. I wish I could have ride it in a pony. But no, you have to be under a hundred pounds. My bicep weighs a hundred pounds. <laughs> Look. One fell scoop. She got it in one fell scoop. All the poop, it's gone. Fun fact about the Philadelphia Zoo is it cost you 25 cents in 1874 for admission. Today, it will cost you $23 if you're an adult. Look at his jiggle. Do not eat the raisinets. Hi, Mr. Goat. Huh? So, Mr. Goat, this is a lens. Over here, Goat, this is a lens. Excuse me, Goat. Can I teach you something about ISO? So ISO is the sensitivity to light that your sensor is. So let me tell you all something about photography. It's either sleeping or dead. I certainly hope it's not dead. Hello, look at this guy. Uh-oh. Uh, 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 uh. Goodbye, goats. Where's the soap? I'm milking. Now what would a trip to the zoo be without going to see the flamingos? I actually think I got some pretty good shots of the flamingos. Some nice color, some nice clarity, some nice shapes going on in the images. So I was happy with the few shots I got of the flamingos. One of the things I noticed with the zoom ring is that it was extra tight, meaning I have to exert extra force to go from 100 to 400. It doesn't just allow me to move my thumb and then the lens zooms with ease. It's actually a little tighter, which means I have to exert some extra force, which may take my eye off of the shot I'm trying to get or changes the composition. So just be aware that it takes a little bit of extra force to zoom this lens. So if you need to put a filter on this lens, it's 67 millimeters, which isn't that large, so it won't cost you as much to put a ND filter or any other filter on it. If you'd like to learn how to take better pictures in only 11 days, I created a free mini video course that you can sign up for right now at fronosphoto.com slash 11 days. I've been waiting here for like 20 minutes for the cow to do something. I don't think anything's actually gonna happen. So the 100 to 400 millimeter range is a great range on both full frame as well as the DX sensor because it's giving me that 150 to 600 millimeter, 35 millimeter equivalent. Now on a full frame body, it wouldn't have given me that same oomph, that same reach because the 400 is kind of limiting when you're trying to shoot things at a distance. But if you're shooting baseball, if you're shooting soccer, your kids running around, 400 millimeters on a full frame lens is going to be a really good focal length. Can I pet the penguin? Sure. Yes. <laughs> Hi. Is this what a real penguin feels like? Um, he's probably not. They're probably not this soft. Not this soft? I want to take one home. So I had a great time shooting here at the Philadelphia Zoo. I think the 100 to 400 did a great job on both the D500 as well as the Nikon D5. But the only way to see if this lens is a keeper or not a keeper is to take a look at the raw files and see how the final images look. And now I'm going to head back to the loft to take a look at the images. 
So here we are back at the loft, and I want to remind you that you can download the full res exported JPEGs over on the website, as well as access some of the sample raw files so that you can pixel peep them for yourself. But now let's take a look at some of the images I captured and see how this lens did. So right off the rip, you can see the baby silverback. Now this one was, I believe, eight months old. And you know from seeing the video that I was shooting through glass. I wasn't right up against the glass, uh, and I had to fight reflections and a bunch of kids and people getting in the way. But here at 1 640th of a second at f6, I mean, let me show you how far off I was. I was two stops off. Let me show you this. Check this out. Boom. That's how far off I was because I didn't have my settings right. I just didn't have it right. But again, the power of the raw file allowed me to do that. But that's not what this is about. How is the sharpness? That's really good. What you have to remember is that I'm shooting through glass. Now this is glass that is meant to protect people that are behind it in case a uh, 400 and some pound gorilla goes nuts and tries to break it. It's not going to happen. I wonder if it's gorilla glass. I don't know. But here we go. I'm happy with that shot, like the black and white. Um, moving on to this one. This was the mother. I believe this was honey, maybe. I don't know which gorilla it was actually. but. ISO 3200, 1 640th of a second, handheld at 340 millimeters, and I'm getting a super sharp image, even at an angle through the glass. The, the quick tip that I have for you is if you're shooting through this glass, if you're in a situation like this, you have to find the right angle where you're not getting a major reflection or somebody isn't in the way giving a big reflection into the glass. Or if you're shooting straight through it, you get right up against it as close as possible with your lens hood, probably resting against it, so that you don't get any stray light coming in from the side. Um, but I love this image more in black and white. And I'm really happy with how sharp it is, even through the glass. If you see this noise, it's not really going to be there in a print. That's pixel peeping. You can take a look at this raw file yourself and see how good it is. But I'm at ISO 3200 at f6. And even indoors, it did really well. I was indoor, uh, the gorilla was sitting slightly outside, but in a really dark shade. Now this is the reflection I'm talking about. This is that woman that was standing there with a absurd hat with feathers on it that was getting in the way. Anyway, that just shows you how bad, how tough it was to do it. I also didn't do a full, I shot the tight eye shot for a reason because on the glass, there was this little scratch or this scuff mark, which isn't that bad, but you may say, why didn't you move to one side or move to the other? And the reason has to be that the glass wasn't clean and this was the best cleanest angle that I could get. So moving on to outside, you can see that I'm at 270 millimeters with the Nikon D500. So you multiply that by 1.5 and at F6, you can see the mother and the baby in the background, and this is the father. Now, if you were shooting at f4, if you had a lens that did that, or a lens that did f2.8, you would not see them as prevalent. They would blow out a little bit in terms of being out of focus in the background. But I'm happy with this. Look how sharp this is when you zoom in. And yes, I'm outside, and some people may say, why are you shooting at 3200? The simple answer is, they're in a shadow. Plus, what shutter speed? 1 1600th of a second. Plus, I need a fast enough shutter speed to counteract my hand motion when I am zoomed out because you don't want your shutter speed to drop below your focal length. And in this case, the focal length is based off of 1.5 time crop factor. So that just helps. And in conjunction with the optical stabilization, it should help you get a sharper image. I don't have a problem bumping my ISO. Most cameras can handle 3200 in this day and age without a problem. Moving on to the next one, I just like the look on the face. I wish the mother was still sitting there in the background, but you have the baby in the background and you have this really nice looking face on the silver back right here. Moving on, I just put that in there because I thought it was kind of funny that the guy was using a uh, point and shoot cap, sorry, not even a, point, a disposable. I don't even know where you get those anymore, but also the observers become the observed. That's right, trademark. Not really, I'm sure somebody already made a video about that. Then this was the mother in the shade again. I didn't realize personally that I cut her hand off. I didn't even see it because of the shadows. And when I was looking through the camera, I just didn't notice it because I was focused in on the eye. Um, but this is breastfeeding. Uh, it's. I like the shot. I mean, it's the first time this baby was out, they said. It was only two and a half weeks old, so it was a pretty big deal that the baby came out with the mother outside. Um, and then you can see the full frame, wide, sorry, the horizontal right here. You can also see where the shadow happens. 
This is where the shadow happens. So she's sitting in the shadow, and on the other side, it's like five stops brighter light, which is very hard to deal with. I could bring it back a little bit in post, but you're gonna see a strong line. It's gonna take a lot of work to bring that back, and honestly, I think it looks fine the way it is, one one thousandth of a second. Did you know that I have four, count them, four educational video guides? Well, if you didn't know, head on over to fronosphoto.com slash guides to get a free preview of all four of them. Moving on to this one, let's see, 280 millimeters, so he wasn't as far away, but look at that, filling the frame all together, 280 millimeters times the 1.5, but look at this, nice and sharp on the face. The exposure is very good, do not worry about this bright area in the background being blown out. I actually moved the highlights all the way down because this is where they were when it was shot. And you can bring it back and bring it down in post just a little bit and it makes it less distracting. But there's almost no way that you could expose for the silver back right here in the shade and still get the perfect exposure in the background unless you took multiple shots and did HDR. Um, the reason I picked this shot, 400 millimeters away. What you have to remember is being on the crop sensor camera, I get more reach. I get more bang for my buck based off of the 35 millimeter equivalent where I wouldn't have been able to do this if I had the Nikon D5 on because that is full frame. So I would have maxed out at 400 millimeters which wouldn't have gotten me this full shot right here and you may have had to crop in post, but I just picked this because I loved the light in the eye. He just moved a certain way that the sun peeked through the trees and hit him right there. Moving on, polar bear shooting through this glass, not easy, especially when it's an old enclosure. It's been there for 36 years, um, but it's an okay shot. You may find that a lot of shots turn into snapshots. Uh, when you're at the zoo or in certain situations, this lens will give you snapshot type photos, but also you can get keeper images if you know what you're doing. Because you can do that with just about any lens, you just need to be aware of how to do that because your settings are really important. So the reason I showed this and I talked about it in the video before is I wanted you to see the fence. The fence that I was focused on, that I'm shooting through the fence here wider, but when you go tighter, boom, the fence is gone, right? I'm shooting through a fence in the foreground and it's gone and I'm zoomed all the way in 400 millimeters. And this is on the Nikon D5, so it's the full frame. And then this weird looking bokeh in the background, that is caused by the out of focus fence in the background. Nothing you can do about that. That's not a problem with the lens. That is just what it is because that's what it looks like to shoot with the fence out of focus in the background. So color, the color is fantastic popping off of these raw files, which is great for the lens. Look at the colors. You have the separation of this blue into purple. Uh, you have the nice sharp eye of this bird. You know, really good, really happy with that shot. Happy with the colors and tones and clarity in this image as well. It just looks really good. And it's not just because I'm using the Nikon D5, but I just wanted to show you the full frame capability with this lens. And a lot of it comes down to your settings making sure that you get those right. For a prime example, I'm at 2000 ISO inside, 1 800th of a second is a good amount of shutter speed to make sure that it counteracts any movement that I personally have. And the optical stabilization did a pretty good job, though I don't think it's as good, like I said earlier, as some of the other high-end lenses. It does okay, it just seems a little bit more herky-jerky uh, and at slower shutter speeds, I don't think it's as good as the much more expensive lenses, but they're much more expensive. So again, with this outdoor shot, I'm shooting through a fence and the bokeh in the background is the fence on the other side. Super sharp, really nice, but I wanna move on to this image. This is the image that sells the lens for me. Look at how sharp the beak is. Look, you can see the hairs on the beak. You can see individual feathers nice and sharp, and the eye is nice and sharp. I'm at 1 2,000th of a second, even though I'm outside, I'm at, I'm at ISO 500, which means don't be afraid to have more shutter speed. I'd rather have a sharper image than an image that is out of focus or has some motion blur because I didn't bump my ISO. But this, this image right here, this kind of puts it to rest. If I'm getting a sharp image like this, you can do that as well. And that basically sold the lens for me. Being this sharp on this image, 
If I can do it, you definitely can do it, and that's just an incredible range. Moving through, we've got water droplets. He was flapping his, uh, his ears, which was causing the water to go ahead and fly around. Freezing droplets in, 1 1250th of a second definitely helped freeze that motion. Uh, even though I'm shooting at ISO 1000 outside and they're in the shade, again, I'm not afraid to push it right there. Then you see the giraffe. Now I'm at 100 millimeters at F5, and it looks like everything is almost in focus. This is the difference between having a 2.8 or an f4 because you can see that it almost looks like the background's in focus but when you zoom in you can see that it is starting to blow out just a little bit meaning the there's some sort of bokeh but again this is more snapshotty if the background was deeper maybe it would have less focus there but you can just see the difference between a keeper shot and really not much of a keeper shot this again more of a snapshot cut the polar bear's foot off um the but I liked it. I liked watching the bear float by, pushing itself, pulling itself along. And this is a type of shot that you may run into because at 100 millimeters, you can't get that wide on that crop sensor camera. That's a 150 on the Nikon, and it's even more than that on a Canon, which is a 1.6. Uh, crop factor. Had to shoot flamingos, giving you an example of the background. Really happy with the focus. Nice and tight on the eye right there. Love the droplets. Love the tones, the colors, the clarity. I just love I like how the background blows out. I think it looks fine on this lens. Remember, $800 lens, doing a great job. It almost looks like a painting in the background with this image. The flamingo is cleaning itself. I love the S curve. I love the shape. I love the way that the feathers are just blowing out or how they look, the sharpness, the clarity right here on the eye. Really good, able to hit that. Handheld, one one thousandth of a second. OS was on. Um, and then just a little bit of tighter shot, which I may have missed the focus slightly, but at the end of the day, unless you're pixel peeping, you probably won't even notice it. Now, I went ahead and took some sample photos out of the soccer game because people want to know, how's the autofocus? How does it work for sports? Remember, on the crop sensor, you're getting more bang for your buck. And what I wanted to show you here is this is where there's a couple of things. You can see that the background is pretty much in focus at F6. You've got the porto potties, you've got cars in the background, you've got the ref on the other field, you've got these people that take away from isolating your subject. But in order to get a, a, like a 400 millimeter lens or a 300 millimeter lens that's a 302.8, you're dropping $6,000 and this is 800 bucks, um, but super sharp, one one thousandth of a second. I think the focus did a pretty good job. Uh, you probably don't wanna have the optical stabilization on outside. Uh, you just want a faster shutter speed, and that's what I'm showing you right there. Now moving on to the next one, I did a little test. I put it on aperture priority because I wanted to see what the camera would do. And in this case, it shot it at one five hundredth of a second, and I'm at 400 millimeters, which kind of breaks that rule of hand holding with a slower shutter speed. Um, I was at 400, which means that's the equivalent of 600, and my shutter speed's 1 500th, which means, look, I got a little bit of blur there that could be from handshake, my hand shaking like this when I'm shooting, even with the optical stabilization, you still may run into issues. So at the end of the day, it comes down to your settings. You have to understand your settings and be, be happy with your settings or know what to do. Don't be afraid to bump that ISO to get a shutter speed that's 1 1250th of a second at say uh, 640 ISO. Don't be afraid to do that. I want a sharp image versus having an out of focus image. So the last thing that I'll say is if you have a full frame body and you want this reach, you want 600 millimeters, I suggest you check out the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter. Though it is $200 more and weighs about two pounds more, it's going to give you that reach that I'm getting with the 100 to 400 equivalent on a crop sensor on a full frame camera. There's pros and cons to both. The 100 to 400 right here is lighter and a little less expensive, so it's easier to carry around. Uh, and it still gives you a good bang for your buck on full frame as well as cropped. But then you have to ask yourself, do I want more? If you want more, the 150 to 600 could be that option. And the last thing that I want to say before I wrap it up is that think about it. A 600 millimeter F4 from Nikon is somewhere around $10,000. I have come to the realization that sometimes these super zooms that may not have the best aperture are really good. They are super sharp now. They give you very good autofocus. They give you great handhold ability. And honestly, I think you can get certain pictures that you wouldn't be able to get with a 600 millimeter F4 because it's a fixed focal length lens 
you're able to get other pictures because you can zoom. And at the end of the day, it's, it's all about capturing that moment. Did this lens let you capture a moment that the other lens wouldn't have let you do? And was it $10,000 or $12,000 less expensive? And the answer is yes. So 100 to 400, I highly recommend it. Whether you're on full frame or crop, I can't see a problem with it. As long as you get your settings right, you should be good to go. And that's it. And the one last thing I want to say is my gear vault. If you're purchasing gear, how do you input, organize, and protect it? Go download my gear vault right now. It's a free app for iOS and Android. And I think once you start using it, you're absolutely gonna love it. So go check it out and I'll leave it right there. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland, froknosephoto.com. See ya.